the four hour body a new day a new four hour great that it is not working <laughs> <laughs> and yeah with that being said hello and welcome back to the next episode of the self-development with tactics podcast and i am looking forward to that do i have marked yes i have we're gonna go straight into it because we can and because i've already went through it but i do wanna now i can actually make it bigger you know so that you and i we both see it a tiny little bit better. Let's see. Let's see where we have stopped. Uh, because I've just... Yes, here it is. The last thing we've been talking about is getting plenty of legends. So uh, maybe to just give you a little bit of an introduction for those people that haven't seen the first episode and do not know what this book is all about. Um, the book is called The 4-Hour Body by Tim or Timothy Ferris. Um, you might know Tim Ferris. You probably do. If you don't, please check him out. It's an incredible podcast, an incredible personality and incredibly smart. And he just knows such a lot of stuff, which is pretty amazing. You know, also just in the book, there's so much information in the book and so much information also in this summary. So I do wonder, but I also do actually know that there is so much stuff in this book. But yeah, let's see. Mistake number seven. Uh, six, overeating, domino foods, nuts, chickpeas, hummus, peanuts, macadamias. There are certain foods that, while technically fine to eat on, on that diet, are prone to portion abuse. I call these domino foods, as eating one portion often creates a domino effect of oversnacking. My fat loss has plateaued three times due to almonds, which are easy to consume by the handful and simple to excuse as nutritious. Unfortunately, they also contain 824 calories per cup, 146 calories more than a Whopper from Burger King, which is having 678 kilocalories. A few almonds is just fine, so 5 to 10, but no one eats just a few almonds. Yes, this is really like, the funny thing is, um, here you're having peanuts, and today I've also been eating um, chickpeas, cooked chickpeas, because of the protein and because of, yeah, and this is also because of the protein. And I've also eaten hummus because of the protein. And as far, if you just don't know, hummus is made out of chickpeas. But yeah, unsustainable overeating and related reward eating. Doing too much will not only not help, it will reverse your progress, as it also leads to overeating, sports drinks and other assorted self-sabotage. Remember, M-E-D, which is the... Uh, it basically means just doing what you should be doing, uh, the, the minimal effective doses. Yeah, less is more. I don't know. And it is also the thing that I've been talking about yesterday. I still work out for an hour, you know. I still do that. You know, I could just go for just muscle failure and then that's quite it. But I, I don't want to do that quite you know i do also feel that it is not enough for me i do also feel that i need more i do also feel that i do want to do more and i can do more so i'm also going to do that i guess so but but i don't know like i do want to point out that if you're a personality and a person that's having not really a lot of time and doesn't really want to take a lot of time for working out then going for muscle failure and this is what he's also talking about later on but if you just google you're going to find a really, really short summary of this book just being about like how to, yeah, how to train the right way. Something that I can suggest is being for 10 seconds of, of time and attention per set. Yes. So if you're doing 10 push-ups, then you should be, you, you should be quiet. You know, you should not be over the 10 seconds of time under tension, which, which means if you go down, that's time and attention if you go up that's time and attention but if you just stay up and stay down like it's it's not yeah it is technically but just between the reps basically counting for i don't know which means for example if you're doing just seven reps 10 seconds long you're gonna have 70 seconds am i wrong no? <laughs> i did just remember that i've read in the relative bottom that 10 seconds which means if you do just one, well, I don't know. Like, yeah, there is something like that. 
Um, I'm, well, I'm actually gonna find it. Time under... Yeah, there it is. Um, as a general guideline, we don't want time under tension for exercise sets to exceed 10 seconds, as we want to minimize lactic acid production. The thing is, this is something that I've done <laughs> like really a lot in terms of um, just uh, working out and doing it like so slow, like literally going down seven seconds, going up seven seconds, and then doing this for like, I'm only just able to do this three times because then just actually my, my, my muscle starts, st stops working. But yeah, I just don't do it. It seems to be the case. So you seem to actually be doing it faster, I guess. This is like actually a problem that I'm having with the book. That sometimes it is contradictionary. You know, sometimes it is this, sometimes it is that. Yeah, you know, it is something that I've been thinking about while I've been eating actually. But I think it could also just point out or underline that there is no one right way. And there is similar uh, or just multiple right ways. And that there is multiple things to have a look at. You know, it's, it's not only this and it's not only that. But you should just have in mind a few things to just maybe make the best decision, probably. Have as much of the crap ingested either go into muscle tissue or out of the body unabsorbed. I do this by focusing on three principles. Principle one, minimize the release of insulin, a storage hormone. Insulin release is minimized by planting sharp, sharp chumps in blood sugar. Ensure that your first meal of the day is not a binge meal. Make it high in protein, at least 30 grams. And insoluble fiber, which is legumes, will handle this. The protein will decease or decrease your appetite for the remainder of the binge and prevent total self-destruction. The second point, consume a small quantity of fructose, fru fruit sugar, in grapefruit juice before the second meal, which is the first crab meal. Even small fructose doses has an Impressive near flatlining effect on blood glucose. In general, he says you should not be eating any fruits. But now, if you're, if it is all about anything, it is very important to just read really correctly and really accurately. He's talking about having binge meals. He's talking probably about cheat meals, I'd say. And yeah, so do these things for cheat meals. I would say. <laughs> well... The fourth one, consume critic, uh, I'm sorry, citric juices, whether lime juice squeezed into water or lemon juice on food. And the third one, use supplements that increase insulin sensitivity, AGG, part of PHG and PHGG. Well, yeah, I do, I do, by the way, wonder, because it is something that we often do is having uh, just a slice of lemon on our fish, on our schnitzel, on our whatever. Does this have a reason? You know, just besides the whole taste thing. Is there like a, a health reason that we're doing that? I really wonder because, I mean, something that I've actually seen is something is more acidic, it tastes better. You know, it is more interesting. You know, if, if you add just a little bit of vinegar to quite everything that you're eating, it just tastes better. Unless it is something sweet, I guess, then I don't know. But I've seen it with everything. Tomato sauce, add some vinegar. It's going to be better because it's basically the exact same thing as having a wine, but it is non-alcoholic and, and not as sweet, of course. Like, there is some acidity to the wine, but, um, you know, just be sure that you're not adding a lot of vinegar because then if you just add too much vinegar, everything is fucked, basically. Principle two, increase the speed of gastric emptying or how quickly food exits the stomach. Binge, binging is a rare circumstance where I want the food or some of it to pass through my gastrointestinal tract so quickly that it is constituent parts aren't absorbed well. I accomplish this by primarily, primarily through caffeine and yerba mate tea, or tea, which includes the additional stimulants theopromine, which is also found in dark chocolate, apparently, and theothelin found in green tea. I consume 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine. I don't know if this is smart. I don't know if this is too much, you know? Or 16 ounces of cooled yerba mate at the most crab-laden meals. <laughs> Principle six, engage in brief muscular contraction throughout the binge. 
For muscular contractions, by default, options are air squats, wall presses, which is trap tricep extensions against the wall, and chest pulls with an elastic band or elastic band. Why the hell would you do? <laughs> would you want to do 60 to 90 seconds of funny exercise a few minutes before you eat, and ideally again about 90 minutes afterward? Question mark because it brings glucose transport type four to the surface of muscle cells, opening more gates for the calories to flow into. Like I, I do actually want to point out that it is insane what um what he's just talking about there i guess um like like there's there's so much information there's so many things there's so many ideas so many things you can be doing for all sorts of things i mean on one hand it is so tim ferris because it is just how he's doing things he's just optimizing everything um which is in my point of view actually pretty amazing because if you're able to do so, then you're able to just be successful anyway. You know, quite. You know, quite, quite. Um, just a second, I need to just do something with my hair. Let's do it like this. And let's do it like that. And now I'm fine. The next one is strange. Sissel's Quadragularis, which is CQ, is an indigenous medic medicinal plant of India. CQ preserved my abs. I saw measurable fat loss and anabolic effects once I reached 2.4 grams, which is 2,400 milligrams, apparently, <laughs> three times per day, 30 minutes prior to meal, for a total of 7.2 grams per day. Super Caesar's RX. This is the brand of CQ I used during the experimentation. Should I look it up? Maybe. No. The wrong one. Apparently I could also just press... Uh, what if I just... No. Oh, well, anyway. Never mind. There are actually 10 times more bacterial cells in your body than human cells. 100 trillion of them to 10 trillion of you. For the most part, these bugs help us improving our immune system, providing vitamins, and preventing other harmful bacteria from infecting us. Lean people have more bacterioids and fewer firmicutes. Obese people have more firmicutes and fewer bacterioids. Perioidites. Which apparently, I assume, has something to do with the shit that you're eating. And it might actually, as I'm thinking about it, I don't know what this is, but I assume... I do assume that if you're obese, that because of them, losing weight is more work because of this bacteria that you're having in your gut, I guess. Or all over the place. I think all over the place. Well, yeah. 12 traditional diets of near-disease free indigenous communities spread around the globe. He found that the one common element was fermented foods which were consumed daily. Cultural men mainstays varied but included cheese japanese natto kefir which as far as i know is a turkish food i don't know kimchi also spelled kimchi sauerkraut or the sauerkraut and fermented fish unsweetened plain yogurt and fermented kombucha tea are two additional choices fermented foods contain high levels of healthy bacteria and should be viewed as a mandatory piece of your dietary puzzle Consider probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics are bacteria I've used. Uh, are bacteria I've used. Sedona labis iflora probiotics. I do. What is fermented food? Fermented. The beer continued to ferment in the cask. Undergo fermentation. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I do want to just know what is what exactly you're doing with it. Brutalizing environment that ferments prison disorder. Well. Fermented. How do you do this? Fermentation food processing. Fermentation food processing is the process of converting carbohydrates to alcohol or organic acids using microorganisms like yeast or bacteria under anaerobic conditions. Fermentation usually implies that the action of microorganisms is desired. The science of fermentation is known as semiology or semorgy. The new ferment 
The term fermentation sometimes refers specifically to the chemical convention conversion of sugar into ethanol, which is done with every wine, beer. Yeah, that's it, I guess. Like a general alcoholic, as far as just, just also because you're creating alcohol, would make sense. I prefer inulin, which I get through the athletic greens. Inulin is about 10% the sweetness of sugar, but unlike fructose, it is not insulin insulinemic. In the whole food realm, garlic, leeks, and chicaro or cicero are all high in inulin. Athletic greens, and there are some, some things, and terabands, and whatnot. PHEG, polyconsenol. 20 to 25 grams alpha libioic acids, 100 to 30, 100 to 300 grams. Um, yeah, uh, well, I'm gonna read it. I take 300 milligrams with each meal, but some people experience acid reflux symptoms with more than 100 milligrams. Green tea flavanols, which is decaffeinated with at least 325 grams of EGZG, 20, uh, 325 milligram garlic extract. Um, 200 milligram daily PHEG intake is time before HEG prior oh no well yeah anyways ALA helps you to store the carbohydrates you eat in muscle or in your liver as opposed to in fat decaffeinated green tea extract pills it's like, like literally pills well I suggest using an aged garlic extract which is AGE with high Allicin potential that includes all constitutes, uh, cons constituent parts, including S. allyl cysteine. You can burn almost four times more fat than usual with two hours of cold expo exposure. Two hours is actually quite a lot. I'm getting like, let me think, uh, two minutes in total a day or something. I place an ice pack on the back of my neck and upper trapezius or tri triceps. No, tra 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 no, this is the the, the trapezius uh, traps. Yeah, traps, trapezius traps. Um, area for 30 minutes, generally in the even when my insulin sensitivity is lower than in the morning. Not all fat is equal. There are at least two distinct types. White adipose tissue, which is WAT and brown adipose tissue BAT. WAT is what we usually think of as fat, like the marbling on a steak. A WAT, an anti andibiocyte, is composed of a single large fat droplet with a single nucleus. BAT, in contrast, is sometimes referred to as fat burning fat and appears to be derived from the same stem cells as muscle tissue. Cold stimulates. BAT to burn fat and glucose as heat. Indeed, it does. This is also one reason why I am taking cold showers every single day. Also because, um, as he says down there, cold water improves immunity. Acute cold exposure has immuno, immunostimulating effects and preheating with a physical exercise or a warm shower can enhance this response and preheating. Or you just take a cold uh, a warm shower before and then you're gonna just really fuck yourself with a uh, cold one. I hope that I got that right. Uh, but yeah, I do think that I'm gonna end the episode there. It's a lot of just technical things in this one. The next one's gonna be better. But anyway, I wish you the best health of happiness and also success and also hope that you're gonna be fine. You're gonna remember how you're gonna be remembered. Yeah. And... And do the right thing because it is your legacy and you should be remembered as a good person all the time. Quite. It makes sense. Three other questions that I'm having for you are why are you here, what are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most. I do hope that, that, that you're going to find your purpose through these questions and I also hope that you're going to maybe even find a business idea and I also hope that you're going to be fine and you're going to be good and then I'm going to see you the next time. So I wish you the best. And I'll see you. Bye-bye.